It's been fun looking at how different schools incorporate this professional development. University of Tennessee calls it success and wellness, so it goes by different names, but if, as we look at this non-clinical uh, curriculum, I've seen it happen anywhere from it's a required class for three weeks for all third year students. I was out at Colorado State University a couple weeks ago, and that's how we do it out there. Three weeks, very intense, and imagine drinking from the fire hose analogy. That's very much what they're doing. We're trying to cover all those things I mentioned in professional development in a three-week period. And it's great we're doing it. I'm not complaining it's being done. But in a place like that, how they achieved it was students come back a little bit earlier from, from winter break to be able to fit that in. You have other schools, and uh, the Ohio State does this, UPenn does this, where it's an elective. And students take it as an elective like they would anything else. It doesn't cut into the normal curriculum that way. Um, Melissa Maddox is a good friend and a colleague of mine, and we're working down at University of Tennessee together uh, with Dr. Kirk, uh, Claudia Kirk's uh, kind of permission and, and blessing. We've been able to truly integrate it into three years of the curriculum, and so there is some give and take. Something's got to give to allow that to happen, and from the administrative side, we have to decide that this is important enough that we're willing to restructure the schedule without having them lose the important clinical skills and that's what we've done down there and so it's limited but a couple hours a month but we're still able to get in front of the students and talk about all these these theories that they need to be successful and help them in a more adult, adult learning style workshop based curriculum and lab setting so they can actually hopefully take this and use it when they get out.